Hello everyone, Hyper here. And with Mythic Eternal Palace releasing tomorrow, I wanted to record a short video kind of giving my first impressions on Eternal Palace, what I thought of the raid, and what I'm expecting from Mythic. So I've had a chance to do this raid uh, three times on my DK and two times on my alts, and then I killed uh, Queen Ashara about 10 times on Heroic by now. So I have a fairly good idea of, of the raid and, and kind of what I like and don't like about it. Um, and this is also a good time to make a few announcements since for the upcoming few weeks, as you all know, the Mythic Race will be going on, so things will be a little hectic. First of all, my guild is participating in the Method Stream and is kind of partnered with the Method Stream. So if you guys want to catch some of my guild's progress on their channel, you can. Or you can also just watch the individual streams from Vodka um, or my stream. And also, if you happen to support Limit, I have a lot of friends from AK who are now raiding there. So make sure you go over there as well and watch some of their prog. And I'm very, very excited for this World First race because even though there was a lot of community controversy between the whole Red Bull method thing, um, I think it's going to be a great event and more guilds than ever are participating in it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. And as far as my personal stream goes, um, day one of Mythic, so tomorrow, if you're watching this video, the day it's released, um, I will be streaming pretty much all day. And then we have our raids in Vodka from 6 Pacific Standard Time, which is 9 Eastern Time. Um, and that is every single day except for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you guys want to catch the live progress, those are the times to do so. But now let's just take a look at these fights and see how this raid actually went on Heroic Week. This raid with the whole underwater thing, the caves, the, the, the way structured where you fight your way up. Uh, so you start like kind of on the ground level and like a secret entrance or whatever. Um, and then fight your way all the way up to the top of the spire where you fight the last boss. I thought that was really, really cool. Also, the way the bosses are laid out within the raid um, is pretty interesting since you do have a choice to some extent. Um, having a choice on early bosses, I think, is important rather than just having a perfectly linear raid because uh, for some guilds, some bosses may be easier than others. So having the choice between like the second, third, and maybe fourth bosses, whichever one you want to do in a specific order, is kind of important. Um, and it also kind of gives people a way to go to the bosses that their roster is stronger for um, as, as quicker bosses or earlier bosses. For the fights, um, the first one is Abyssal Commander Savara, and I actually am looking forward to this on Mythic because it's been a while since we've had a good first boss. In Old Deer we had Taloc, which I think was kind of a weak first boss, I didn't particularly like it. Um, and then in BOD obviously we had the weakest and biggest joke of them all um, as far as first bosses go. So Commander Savara has the whole poison and ice thing, which I think is kind of interesting and uh, the way you switch it, so you have a little bit of a Maiden vibe from TOS, but put into a first boss so it's not as deadly. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this boss, has quite a few mechanics and should be a good first boss for Mythic. Now the second, third, um, and fourth bosses here, Blackwater Behemoth, so this is the underwater boss and they took a huge risk with this. Um, I think it kind of paid off. I don't really mind this boss. I going into it, I was thinking that, you know, oh no, an underwater boss, this is just gonna be annoying, frustrating things to deal with, but it actually turned out to be pretty good. Only complaint on this is that certain abilities break underwater. Like if you're a mage and you drop your rune of power, for example, it will sink to the bottom of the floor, so you kinda have to be close to it whenever you drop it. Um, or I know warlocks have a certain pet that breaks. So small things like that do happen on this fight. But as far as the whole movement goes, um, I didn't find it too awkward. And the whole breathing mechanic I think is interesting. Um, and it will open up some ways of, of people to figure out how to deal with that exactly on Mythic. 
Radiance of Ashara, um, cool boss, not much to say about it. I think this is probably one of the most melee friendly bosses Blizzard has created in a long time. That is not, you know, the first boss where you don't do anything. So Radiance is actually designed for melee uh, with all the tornadoes. It is a very, very high movement boss. So if you're a ranged DPS, you will constantly have to be interrupting your cast. Um, or, you know, if you're a mage, you'll, you'll have to pretty much shimmer on cooldown to avoid those tornadoes. But for melee, you just run around the entire time smacking the boss So while dodging tornadoes. So it's not a particularly difficult fight, but I think it's it was a breath of fresh air for melee at least to have some mechanics that we do have to deal with and we're better at dealing with than the ranged DPS. Then we have Lady Ashvane. So this boss is actually interesting because we haven't seen an execute fight in a while. And Lady Ashvane, if you are able to make a specific DPS check, this will be the execute fight. This is where you bring your fire mages, your shadow priests, your warriors. Um, because of the way the shield works, you basically want to burst her down in one phase as low as possible. And then obviously puts the shield back on herself. Um, but since her health has already dropped in the execute range, you're able to use your execute abilities. Even though technically she's still at like 80% HP or whatever. So this is going to be an interesting fight and I'm looking forward to it. And it's also one that the trinket where it gives you haste based on the missing HP of the boss might be interesting. Too bad that the trinket is a little bit under budgeted. Um, but I'm looking forward to this fight on Mythic. Orgozoa. This is kind of a single target check. We haven't really done the second phase, to be honest. Um, all the heroic runs and the normal runs that we've done, we either kill the boss before it gets to the second phase, or like right as it gets into the second phase, we go downstairs, kick, and then kill the boss in like five seconds. So I don't know how good the second phase is going to be, but assuming that it has a decent second phase on Mythic, uh, this boss has some potential, but overall I didn't find it too interesting. Then we have Queen's Court. Um, council fight, one of... I'm pretty sure this is the only council fight in the raid, and we haven't had a council fight since Jadefire, right? So that was in the last raid. But this is a ranged council fight. So Jadefire was a kind of a melee council fight where you could stack the bosses and then cleave them down. This is a ranged council fight similar to Antorus, um, the Shvara sisters. I don't remember what they were called. Where you have to spread the, the bosses apart um, and ranged DPS are able to multi-dot. So this is the range friendly boss in the raid. I think it was designed mostly for ranged DPS. Just by the way the mechanics are laid out, with the whole having to soak in the middle, standing in the circles, um, then soaking for your friends whenever they're getting charged. So this boss is very, very uh, ranged heavy, I, I'd say. Uh, but melee does have uh, a place on this boss as well. As far as mechanics, uh, it has quite a few, and um, there's a few that are kind of interesting, but... This boss didn't impress me too much in, in just the design, but I assume on Mythic, where you get specific mechanic overlaps and you have things to deal with a lot more often, it will be a little bit more interesting. Then we have Zakul. I think this will be a very interesting second to last boss, um, just because of the way it's designed with the whole delirium phase, fear phase, and finally we get a boss where you get a damage buff or some sort of ramp ability. Obviously, if you go down in the delirium phase, you gain the huge haste buff, but you are able to be attacked by your by your teammates in that phase. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, which I think is a very, very nice design since it does allow for min-maxing your DPS, who goes down, how much damage you're able to do, how well are you able to survive on your own without killing your friends. So this fight should be pretty interesting on Mythic, um, and I actually think this is this will be one of the first fights that will actually have a pretty high pull count on Mythic. Then we get to Queen Ashara. Now this boss, I've done 
10 plus times at this point, and every time I have the same exact issues. The fight itself, the way it's designed with the phases, the queen's decrees in the intermission, um, I think the queen's decrees are good. Some of them um, I feel like are a little bit buggy at points, but the whole mechanic itself, the idea, the concept is good. And the whole phase, in the first phase you're not even fighting the boss, you're fighting kind of the, the two lieutenants. Um, and that brings its own set of mechanics. So the first phase is kind of like a little introduction. It's easy. There's not much going on. Uh, there's just a few key things that you have to deal with. And then you get to fight Queen um, after you get the first decrees. And this is where the fight starts to get interesting, where you're basically rotating the people who are soaking the wards to prevent them from depleting, or if it's the blue one, prevent it from charging all the way and overloading. So that's the second phase is mechanically fairly simple um, as far as the amount of things you have to do, but it has a great potential for min-maxing and it also has a lot of personal responsibility, which I always like to have on a fight. Um, second intermission where you have the two ads spawn uh, that you have to kill is... Pretty good with the whole spear mechanic, you have to break the shields, a lot of movement, a lot of things going on, a small DPS check, so that so far is good. And then the last phase is probably my favorite, where you actually have to deal with the console, and the people in your group actually get overloaded, uh, the DPS players do, and you just get this insane haste buff, and you're just able to nuke the boss until your buff runs out, and then you die. So that's going to be an interesting mechanic on Mythic uh, to deal with and then try to min-max that a little bit. It's a little unfortunate that the buff is way less beneficial on melee. I wish they kind of changed it so ranged DPS get a different benefit from the melee DPS. Because if the benefit is having instant casts, then obviously ranged DPS who are casters will benefit more than melee who are non-casters. Um, melee still get the haste buff on top of it, but still, if a ranged DPS gets it like a fire mage or a shadow priest over a melee DPS, that is a huge, huge damage difference. So I really hope that that RNG is not something that we will really have to deal with on Mythic. Um, now for the downsides of the boss. The entire fight, basically, even before the fight starts, um, there's input lag, which is very annoying to deal with if you're not used to it. Even if you are used, if you get used to it, it's just still annoying to deal with. And there's frame stutters. Um, I've kind of asked people, I initially thought this was because of the weak auras I use. Maybe I had a bad weak aura that was kind of, um, you know, messing things up, or I had a bad add-on. But I talked to a few people and it seems like everyone's having the same issue on this boss where you just either get bad input lag, which if you don't know what that is, you press an ability and it's supposed to immediately go off based on your ping or your MS. But with input lag, you press the ability and then like half a second later, the ability goes off. Um, so that is very annoying. And then the frame stutters that happens, I don't know, every six to 10 seconds, the, the screen just stutters, even though you look at your frame rates and you're at like, you know, 60 to 100, whatever. So that was very, very frustrating to play with. And I feel like it took a lot away from the fight. So assuming that that gets fixed, this fight has a lot of potential. It is one of the more melee unfriendly fights, I would say, out of the raid. But... I think that with proper strategies and proper, you know, execution, even melee DPS can be good on this fight. However, range does have a fairly strong uh, presence and fairly strong um, representation on this fight, just because of the way the mechanics are designed and everything. So again, over the next few weeks, I will be streaming Mythic Progress. Or if you are not able to watch the stream, you can watch the VODs. And I'm planning on uploading uh, the kill videos basically every night after raid. Or if we kill a bunch of bosses day one, which could happen, then it might take me a day or two to kind of catch up. But basically, as we kill the bosses, I will be uploading them to YouTube as well. 
Um, in the meantime, if you guys are interested in Frost or Unholy DK, both my guides, my written guides are updated. Um, I have a link to them in the description box, or you can always just join the Discord and ask questions later. And the link to that is also in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Have a very good time in the Eternal Palace when Mythic comes out. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the race. See you on the next one.